We're looking at different categories of questions that come under applications of series and sequences, right? So it's not just, okay, there's a term, and there's a 50th term. What happens in between? All that theory stuff, everything is couched in a context. And the primary context you'll see I mean, is money. Okay, that's the primary, this is financial stuff, okay? So yesterday we looked at time payments. Today we're very briefly gonna look at superannuation. Now, a big chunk, a big proportion of the questions you will do that are applications of series and sequences will be this exact thing, or some variant on that. So to explain what I mean, let's just quickly get this down. Now, compound interest. What is the formula for compound interest? Starts with an A. A equals P, P times? One plus. Okay, very good. So this is a simple idea, right? You've got some amount that you start with, which we call the principal, right? You have some interest rate that gets applied to that, added on repeatedly, and then you do that however many times, okay? Now, the way compound interest works is that you take your money, you pop it in the account, and then you don't touch it. I guess we would call that a term deposit, right? It's like no money in, no money out, it just stays what it is and it just faithfully adds its interest on. Okay? Now what superannuation and all of its variants does is it takes this and says, well not only am I gonna have that sum of money and it's gonna keep on adding interest on, okay? But as time progresses, I'm going to insert more money in. And each of those will have its own interest calculations applied to it. Okay? So being that you've got like the first months bit of money and then the second month and the third month and the fourth month and each one is growing interest at its own rate that's where the GP forms and that's why this is its own thing so even though not all of them will be explicitly called superannuation such as this question it's just a deposit they all function in the same way okay I'm putting money in it's getting interest but I don't just do that I, I keep on putting more okay now I'm picking out I'm deliberately picking out the examples that are a bit kind of off center right Eccentric, uh, that aren't just straightforward, that they just don't go through one, two, three, and then out jumps an answer, which is very straightforward. I'm trying to pick out ones which, um, number one, I don't have been historically done poorly by HSC students, and number two, it's because they have like some curveball in there. So read this with me, and you will see it quite immediately, right? Joe opens the bank account, makes the initial deposit, so far, so good. At the start of each subsequent month, Joe makes a deposit, now mark this, right? We said, oh, okay, you're gonna put money in repeatedly, and that's pretty normal. But here, the amount that she puts in, each time, it grows, right? So it's not just that I keep on putting money in, but I'm putting in increasingly large amounts, okay? Now that's actually not that surprising because if, for instance, you have a normal salary job and your income is increasing year to year, if it was superannuation, all the government do is doing is taking out a percentage. So that percentage is going to grow. Maybe not this quickly. Maybe inflation's really crazy in this country. That's why she's doing this, okay? So you've got this, the amount is growing. But in addition to that, this is the normal part. In addition to that, each part is gathering interest, right? So then we start at the questions, right? Uh, almost always, and in fact, every example I think I've found, the part one will give you some kind of result that you have to prove. That's for two reasons. Number one, they want to see you can't just jump to a formula, right? Students who jump to a formula don't necessarily understand what is going on here. And number two, it's so that if you are still a bit confused with this, you can use it for the next part. So, let's have a go on part one. Let's give this a try and see how it differs, number one, from obviously compound interest, but number two, from a regular kind of superannuation where you're just putting in the same amount every time. Now in past questions they will say, you know, let like a of n is equal to something, but we don't have any a of n here, so I need to define one. I'm gonna say let a n dollars. What would you like to call that? Obviously that's something to do with timing, right? What would you like to define n to be? Yeah, I would say now. I've got two choices here. I can just say it's the number of months, but to be a little more specific, I'm going to say when in the month that is. Okay? The reason why is because you can see the timing in the month matters, right? At the start of each subsequent month, that's when the deposit goes in, and then at the end of every month, the interest gets applied, right? One and then the next, and the order significantly matters, right? So we need to watch for that. Let's do this then. Let A of N be the amount and please don't skip this step, even though it's like, it's not maths, well actually it is, because it will define the equations that we write in a second. B 
beating mass at the end of the nth month. Okay, so if I say, well, where do I begin? What is the first thing? Two things happen every month. There is, number one, a deposit, and number two, there's going to be the interest calculation. Yes? Okay, so I start with this first deposit. I actually know exactly what it is. It's 500. There's the first thing that happens. And then the second thing is an interest calculation. Is that okay? So what am I going to do with this 500? One plus two. Yeah, in fact, I'm really going to do this. Like for the first, um, the first deposit, compound interest just applies to it just like usual, right? So it's 1.003, mark the extra percentage, uh, sorry, the extra zero, decimal place. That's a, sorry, it's just a way of talking, okay? So <laughs> there you go, there's the first amount. I've done the deposit, I've done the interest, that's it. Okay, next thing, right? The next month, again, the same two things happen. So I start with this. Right? That's what I had before. And then I get an extra deposit. Now, what is the size of that deposit? One percent of the... Yeah, so it's going to be 500, but it's going to be a bit bigger. right? So I'm going to write that as 500, and then there's the extra 1%. So I'm going to go 1.01. So there's the first thing that happened, the deposit. Now what? Yeah, the entire thing, note that the entire thing gets the interest calculation. So that whole thing gets a 1.003 added on. So anyone want to clarify that? Yeah? No? I got a bit confused when um, you said you had to add 1% onto yep. the... Wait, so I thought you had to go 1% on top of 500, 1.003. Okay, Five. so it says, so if I just were to make a series out of the deposits only and forgetting about the rest of the account, right? The first deposit is 500. The next deposit is 1% more than that deposit. So it's 500, then it's 500 times 101%, oh. then it's that times 101%, then it's that times 101%. So not including the interest. Correct. So it's 1% more than the previous deposit, okay. not the whole amount that's oh. in the account, because he would run out of money very fast okay. if he did that. Okay. So now that I've got that, right, you notice I've done this already, by the way. I always include, like, say that it's A1. Don't just put, like, numbers in there. Say what they come from, okay? So now I'm going to substitute through because that's, that should be getting me this, right? Explain why the balance of the account at the end of the second month is that. So I should be getting from there to there. Does that make sense? Let's see what happens. So I've got... Okay. Please don't skip any of these steps. The maths is simple, right? It's simple, so therefore, you're expected to demonstrate everything to explain why you're doing this, right? So, this is my explanation so far, and I'm almost there. You can see I'm pretty much there. I just need to multiply through, and out pops this, right? So that initial deposit, read it with me. Like, don't just write down the numbers. The first deposit has been in there for two months. So that's why it's got two interest calculations applied to it. You see that? That's what that means. And then here is the second month's deposit. It's grown, like it started off bigger, and also it's had one lot of interest applied to it. Yeah? Cool, so far so good. Then they throw you right in the deep end. Part two, find the balance in the account at the end of the 60th, 60th month. So clearly I don't want to have to do A1, A2, A3 all the way. I'm going to have to generalize to get to the 60th. Correct to the nearest dollar. 